from the time of memorial has been the custom among the fraternity of ancient free and separate the request of a brother to accompany his remains to a place of eternity. There and deposit them according to the solemn formalities of the craft. In conformity with that usage, and in accordance with the duty that we owe to our departed brother, we have assembled here in the class of Masons to offer up this memory before the world, the last tribute of our passions, thereby demonstrating the sincerity of our private esteem, as well as to the many attachments we have to the principles of our world. The Almighty Creator having been pleased in his infinite wisdom to remove our brother from the cares and troubles of this transitory life, has thereby severed another link in our eternal chain by which we're all bound together. So let us that survive him, the utmost cemented by the power of brotherly love. And in the short space of time that we have allocated to us here, we may wisely and usefully employ our time, and in the reciprocal intercourse of some kind and friendly acts, willfully promote the welfare and happiness of each other. All merciful Father, into thy hands we commend the spirit of our beloved God. The will of God is accomplished. Amen. So might be. Amen. So might be. Amen. So might be. Brother, once again, we have been called to perform the song of duty of the day. The mortal note that the token the departure from this earthly tabernacle has again alarmed the outer door, and the letterhead has been taken to swell those numbers into the unknown land <coughs> where our fathers have gone before. Our brother has seen the end of life. That brittle thread which bound him to earth has been severed. Look at his wing is splashed back into the unknown land. Silver cord comes. The golden bowl is broken. Pictures broken at the fountain. We'll loose at the system. The dust will return to the earth as it was. The spirit of the God that gave us. Brethren, we all know that life is so uncertain. All of our earthly pursuits are in vain. But we can no longer postpone that all important concern for planning for eternity. But let us embrace the present moment while time and opportunity are on to provide against that great change and all the pumps and pleasures of a sleeping world to fall upon us. And the recollections of a virtue and a well-spent life yields to us the only confident consolation. But we shall not be unprepared and hurried into the presence of that all-wise and merciful judge to whom all the secrets of our hearts are known. But in that great day of reckoning, we too should be ready to stand and give a good account <coughs> of our stewardship while here on earth. The lambskin apron is an emblem of innocence, a badge of amazement. More honorable than the star and garden, when weatherly worn. This is my now deposit on the castle of our deceased brother. <coughs> the arms of friendship cannot interpose to prevent his coming. The wealth of the world cannot purchase our reflash, nor will the innocence of youth or the charms of beauty propitiate his purpose. The matter, the coffin, and the melancholy grave admonishes us that sooner or later these frail bodies must molder in their parents' dust. This evergreen, which once marked the temporary resting place of the illustrious dead, is an emblem of our faith in the immortality of the soul. By it, we are all reminded that we all have an immortal part within us that shall survive the grave and that shall never, never, never die. By it, we are admonished that though like our brother, whose remains lie before us, we shall all be clothed in the habiliments of death and deposited into that solid tomb. Yet, through our belief in the mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we may confidently hope that our souls will bloom in eternal spring. This I deposit from the casket of our deceased brother. With the exclamation, alas, my brother, the brethren will assist in giving public honors to our brother. With the arms are crossed upon the breast, we cherish his memory here. 
When the arms are lowered by the side, we commend this body to the earth. And when the arms are raised above the head, we consign his spirit to that who gave it. Brethren, let us pray. Our Father, the Lord of Christ and our devil's things, and understand our thoughts of God. Shield and defend us from the evil intentions of our enemies and support us under the trials and afflictions we are destined to endure while traveling through this veil of tears. Man born of a woman is up a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth as a flower that is cut down. He flees also as a shadow and continues not. Seeing that his days are determined and the number of his months are with thee, we ask you to turn from him that he may rest until he shall have accomplished his thing. For there is hope of a tree, and if it be cut down, then it will sprout again. And that the tender branches thereof will not cease. Man dieth and wastes away, yea, man gives up the ghost and wears it. As the waters fell from the seas and the floods decay and dries up, man lies down and rises not up until the heavens shall be no more. Yet, O Lord, have compassion on the children of thy creation. Administer them comfort in times of trouble. And save them with an everlasting salvation. Hey, man. Somebody be. Hey, man. Somebody be. Hey, man. Somebody be. Now then.